God, I'm confused. Which choice do I make? God, can you make your answer very obvious, please? So Lord, is it a yes or a no? Do I go this way or that way? Help. Have you ever been at a crossroads? A point where you have to make a very important decision and you just don't want to mess it up. You ask God and you pray to Him for a clear answer on where you should go or what you should do. What choices you should make, whether or not you should take this specific path or that specific path. And you want very obvious answers as much as possible, right? Well, I'm there now. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out whether or not I should do this particular thing that will require a lot for me. And I'm thinking if it's really worth it or not. And of course, I want to do what God wants me to do because first, I want to please Him and also I want to avoid the potential pain and regret that I might experience if I go against His will. But a lot of times, we just don't know what God's will for us is. And even when we ask Him, He doesn't give specific or clear answers sometimes. So how do we make decisions then? What choices are we supposed to make? I'll share the context of my dilemma. So currently, I am deciding whether or not I'm going to take my board exams. I graduated last May 2020 and I got my degree in chemical engineering. And here in the Philippines, you're supposed to take a licensure exam so you could use the engineer title. And most of us actually aim to take that and of course pass it. That was my original plan anyway, to take the board exams. But now the pandemic happened and one and a half years later, as I have already began searching for jobs, I found out that most of them don't really require a license. What they do require though is experience. Sadly, I don't have both. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine. You just can't. And honestly, I don't know what specific career path I want to take. I don't know what specific job I want to do. And honestly, the demand for chemical engineering in the Philippines is very low and so is the salary. Very, very frustrating. Take chemical engineering, they said. It'll give a high salary, they said. It's a prank. And the pandemic just makes things even more complicated. And reviewing for the board exam will take me at least five months. It will require some money. I'm pretty sure that it will take so much of my time, energy, and sanity. <sighs> it will be very stressful. So I'm asking God whether or not I should take the board exams. Now, this shouldn't be much of a problem if I weren't working on this thing, <laughs> this channel, which God has impressed in my heart to do, which I'm very much enjoying, by the way. Initially, I decided that I will take the board exam and I'm just gonna find a way to balance my schedule. I made like a draft schedule and it's doable. I just don't know if I'll be able to execute it because I get easily stressed and tired. But I decided to take it as a challenge. <laughs> Your girl's growing up, she likes challenges now. I wanted to use it as an opportunity to cling to God more and to kind of test my perseverance. I'm not usually like this. <laughs> I wasn't like this before. And I figured that it was going to be now or never. I've been unemployed for almost two years now and I feel like I'm running out of time. I feel like I'm wasting my fresh graduate season and I need to get a job soon. If I'm going to take the exam, I need to do it as soon as possible. So I was like, all right, let's go, bring it on, let's go, let's do it. So I prayed to God to ask for confirmation and I had peace. But then a few days later, I still had hesitations. I wasn't 100% sure yet. So I delayed my final decision. I waited and I remembered Proverbs chapter 3 verses 5 to 6, which says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to Him and He will make your paths straight. So I remember, hey, I could be wrong. Wait a minute, we're rushing this. We need to consult with God first. Even if I try to decide to the best of my ability, and even if I'm trying to be brave, which is good, it may still not be God's plan for me. It may not be God's will for me. So I know that I have to take time to consult with God first. So how do you do that? How do you make decisions the way God would want you to? Is there a biblical way to make decisions? Huh. Yes, there is a biblical way of making decisions. And it's not like a decision tree diagram or a magic eight ball or a flip coin mechanism that tells you exactly what you need to do. It's not like open the Bible and the first verse you land on is the thing that you're supposed to do. 
In those days, Ezekiel became ill and was at the point of death. Get my point. <laughs> well, are you going to rely on chance or on understanding God's word? But biblical decision making does give us wisdom and it tells us where our heart should be. So, how do we make decisions with God? First step, prayer. Start the process with prayer so that you'll get the right attitude and you'll be attentive to what God will be saying to you through the process. And pray away any fears or anxieties that you may have in making these crucial decisions. And pray that you'll be able to trust the Lord and obey Him even when the decision outcome isn't exactly or originally what you planned for or wanted. Second step, proposal. Second step is <laughs> second step. The second step is to give God a proposal of your plans. So when you make a big complex decision with a lot of factors involved, with a lot of pros and cons, you list them down. You lay them all out. Maybe you write on your journal, on your notes, or maybe just in your mind. So you have to lay out all the information and the insights that you have and make sure to be honest and be direct. Also include your motives. It's very important to include your intentions, your motives. So when you have all of these things laid out and you have defined your decision and you have this decision map, then you give it to God. Lord, here are my plans. Please check them if they are according to your will. Thank you. Humbly ask God to help you make a decision that will be according to His will. The third step is seeking godly wisdom. The primary source of God's wisdom is none other than His Word, the Bible. God's very Word that He has revealed to us. If your dilemma is a kind of a morality issue that has an absolute right and wrong, then of course the Bible is very clear on that. For example, should I start this business venture? that will make a lot of money but would potentially involve deception or lying. Bruh. But what if your dilemma isn't really a question of morality, there is no right or wrong, only a this or that. Maybe one is better than the other, maybe one is better than the other in the long run. When you just want to make the best decision and you don't want to mess it up, that's where it gets tricky. It gets tricky when the answers aren't crystal clear, specific, or obvious. That's why I said that biblical decision making isn't like a tree diagram or a magic eight ball. Of course, you won't find all the specific answers to your specific 21st century questions in the Bible, but it does give you a lot of wisdom and it tells you where your heart should be, what your mindset should be, where your priorities should lie, and it helps you gain a better understanding of your motives or intentions and it helps you attain a pattern of thinking, a pattern of thinking that is aligned to God's will. Here are some of the biblical principles that you should consider in making your decisions. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31. So whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. Ask yourself, will this decision give glory to God? Will this choice make a better impact on God's kingdom than another choice? 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. For the spirit God gave us does not make us timid, but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. Ask yourself, is fear holding you back from making a particular decision? And is this fear becoming bigger than your faith? I gotta think about that, seriously. Proverbs chapter 16 verse 2. All a person's ways seem pure to them, but motives are weighed by the Lord. Ask yourself, what are my motives? What is my basis in making these pros and cons? What is my basis over preferring one choice over another? So be honest with yourself and ask God to search your heart. Also, God blesses us with people around us who care for us and who have their own experiences. So we can seek help from people we can trust. Family, friends, mentors, elders, church leaders, or anyone who could give you significant insights from their own experiences and wisdom. So as much as possible, seek counsel from people who also walk with Christ, but in any case, use discernment. And you can easily ask that from the Holy Spirit. The fourth step is devotion. The fourth and I believe the most important step is to spend time with God. Usually and ideally when we make big decisions, we have time, so we prepare for it ahead of time. So we can use this waiting time to spend 
more time, 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 time. So during this waiting period, we ought to devote ourselves to God because this is the part where we get answers from Him. When we spend time immersed in God's Word and in prayer, we become more in tune with God's leading. Just like if you're reading something and you can't really focus on what you're reading because there's so much commotion or noise in the background. If you're so distracted by your fears, by comparing yourselves with other people, by the pressures and expectations that you get from others or even from yourself, by your own desires and goals, and by the feeling that you need to hurry up. Hurry up, hurry up. I am left behind. Can't hear what God is saying. If you're distracted by these things instead of fixing your eyes on Jesus, then you will have a hard time hearing from God. We want clear answers from God, right? But sometimes He just doesn't give it. He just doesn't give clear, specific answers or He doesn't reveal them until a later time. Deuteronomy chapter 29 verse 29 says, The secret things belong to the Lord our God, but the things revealed belong to us and to our children forever, that we may follow all the words of this law. So whatever God hasn't revealed to us yet, it's His business. But God has already revealed a lot to us in His Word. He has already given us a lot of instructions. He has instructed us to keep His commands. He has instructed us to pray continually and to give thanks in all circumstances. He wants us to bear fruit and He wants us to be in fellowship with Him through His Son Jesus Christ and with His people. So then we should focus on obeying what God has already given to us, what God has already instructed us to do. So when He does answer the questions we have in time, we'll know it because we abide in Him. So if God wills it, He will give us a confirmation whether or not we should do a specific thing. Or maybe He will reveal better options that we didn't think of before. Maybe another solution or another way of looking at the problem. God reveals along the way. The fifth and final step is to exercise faith. This is the part where you have to choose. You have to make the decision. Now, if you did the prior steps, and if you can honestly say that you have sought God in the process, considering Him and pursuing Him first, then you can be confident. Make the decision and do your best to carry it out. And don't be afraid if along the way you figure out that the decision you made isn't the best or you made a mistake, it's okay. God has your back, He won't leave you, and He will redirect you. He will redirect you according to His will. I'm going to bring up one of my favorite verses in the book of Psalms. Psalm 139 verses 8 to 10. If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me your right hand will hold me fast. So you might not have enough faith in yourself because you made a lot of bad decisions before, and I get that. Mm -hmm. But have enough faith in God that no matter what, He will be with you as long as you remain in Him. So have I already made my final decision on this dilemma? Almost. I'm still in the middle of the biblical decision-making process. I'm in the fourth step, but thankfully I have a deadline. I have a few weeks to make the decision and it helps. It's really helpful if you have a reasonable deadline or an indicator. What I have fully decided on though is that I will trust God, that He will give me wisdom, that He will direct my steps, that ultimately He will lead me to where I'm supposed to be, when I'm supposed to be there. And in the process, I receive peace. Making decisions isn't scary when you're making decisions with God. So if you find yourself at a crossroads and you're confused or anxious about which step to take next, ask God to lead the way and follow Him. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up down below and comment if this video helped you, gave you fresh insight on what you should do and how you should make decisions. And I hope that whatever decision you make, that it will turn out to be the best for you and, and more importantly, that it will be for God's glory. Also, please consider subscribing to this channel if you haven't yet. And I have videos already uploaded, so you might want to check them out as well. So that is it for this video, and I'll see you on the next. Bye!